Do you remember when Donald Trump stared directly into the sun? How about when President Biden slipped while boarding Air Force One? Keep watching for these and more uncomfortable presidential moments caught on camera. On December 14, 2008, then-President George W. Bush met up with Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki for a news conference in Baghdad. Bush's visit came nearly six years after the U.S. invaded Iraq to look for weapons of mass destruction. After Bush stated that the United States' actions were necessary for world peace, journalist Muntadr al zaidi stood up and shouted at the president in Arabic, "'This is a gift from the Iraqis. This is the farewell kiss, you dog." Zaidi then threw one of his shoes at Bush, who ducked. Continuing, the journalist yelled, "'This is from the widows, the orphans, and those who were killed in Iraq.'" Zaidi then hurled his other shoe at the president, who avoided that flying footwear as well. Zaidi was tackled to the ground and removed as he screamed in protest. Bush remarked afterward, "'So what if the guy threw a shoe at me?' In the aftermath of the event, Zaidi was sent to prison for the offense and stayed there for nine months, before being released early for good behavior. He then left the country before later returning in 2011, and in 2018, Zaidi officially announced that he was running for the parliament in Iraq. On February 10, 2017, then-President Donald Trump sat down with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and shared a 19-second handshake that was truly an awkward occurrence. The former president reportedly doesn't like to shake hands with others, which only made the lengthy greeting even stranger. After Prime Minister Abe initiated the greeting by asking the U.S. president, shall we shake hands, President Trump was then seen patting, holding, and yanking around the Japanese leader's hand. Still, that wasn't the only bizarre thing about the photo op. As the pair shook hands, Trump asked the Japanese prime minister, what are they saying, in reference to the Japanese-speaking photographers. The prime minister translated, Please. Look at me. Ah. Appearing to misunderstand, President Trump then began to stare at the Japanese leader, offering him a big smile. At the same time, Prime Minister Abe gestured toward the cameras in an attempt to point Trump in the right direction. The awkward handshake finished with President Trump patting the back of Abe's hand before releasing him. In March of 2021, President Joe Biden had a bit of a struggle while attempting to climb the steps to board Air Force One. President Biden fell not once or twice but three times before he was finally able to make his way to the top of the stairs and give a salute before departing to meet with Asian American community leaders. After the fall, Deputy White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre told reporters, "...it's very windy. I almost fell coming up the steps myself. He is doing 100 percent fine." When pressed further about whether President Biden had sought medical care, Jean-Pierre simply repeated, "...President Biden is doing fine. He's doing great." On August 21, 2017, a total solar eclipse, dubbed the Great American Eclipse, had many Americans excited to witness the remarkable occurrence. With plenty of people eager to get a glimpse, many scientists and public health officials were busy reminding everyone to acquire the special protective glasses necessary for looking at the sun during the event. Still, when it was time for President Donald Trump, his wife Melania Trump, and their son Barron to watch the eclipse from the White House's Blue Room balcony, the former president decided to forego the warnings and take a peek at the sky without his protective glasses. While Trump didn't stare at the sun for too long, staffers nearby still gave the former president a warning shouting, "'Don't look!' as Trump squinted above and even pointed up at the eclipse. Protective glasses were considered necessary for viewing the eclipse because staring directly at the sun could damage your vision. In 2015, President Barack Obama attended a United Nations luncheon and had a seemingly tense toast with Russian President Vladimir Putin. During the event, President Obama and President Putin, who were one seat apart, were pictured clinking their glasses with visibly different expressions on their faces. President Obama's expression was solemn and, in contrast, President Putin had a grin on his face. While a separate photo from the event did appear to show the former U.S. president smiling at Putin, the actual toast definitely looked awkward. Similarly, an article by Vox reported that the tense image spoke for itself, with the outlet reminding readers that the world leaders were known to have a frosty relationship and had a history of weird photo ops. Politico expressed a similar sentiment, noting the pair's dislike for one another and adding that the leaders were obviously uncomfortable with each other during the lunch. Additionally, a senior administration official told Politico that during the duo's 90-minute meeting after the luncheon, the presidents did not pretend that their talk was for anything beyond business, and Putin himself reported that their encounter was businesslike and frank. On January 8, 1992, then-President George H.W. Bush infamously made history for vomiting on the Japanese Prime Minister, Kichi Miyazawa. The shocking incident occurred during the middle of President Bush's 12-day trip through Asia while he was attending a state banquet in Tokyo. Prior to the meal, the former president had played tennis with the Emperor of Japan. However, it was reported that he'd already thrown up before the dinner even started, so perhaps what happened next wasn't a big shock for the Secret Service. Between the second and third course, President Bush pushed back his chair and fainted before his body fell to the left, and he vomited on the lap of the host, Prime Minister Miyazawa. 
Clearly stunned, the president's wife, Barbara Bush, jumped up to assist her husband as a member of the Secret Service also rushed over to help the unconscious U.S. leader. Bush was then laid out and soon after regained consciousness, reportedly telling his physician, "'Roll me under the table until the dinner's over.'" Later, doctors claimed that the president's short-lived sickness was nothing more than a simple stomach bug, adding that he was fine after taking anti-nausea medication and was able to resume his scheduled plans the following day. In 1998, then-President Bill Clinton made a baffling statement during his grand jury testimony. In a clip, the former president questioned the meaning behind the word is in regards to a false affidavit in which Monica Lewinsky stated, "...there is no sex of any kind, in any manner, shape, or form with President Clinton." Rather than give a simple reply to the question, President Clinton instead chose to give a bizarre response, saying, "...it depends upon what the meaning of the word is." Yes. Clinton went on to add, "...if is means is and never has been, that is not, that is one thing. If it means there is none, that was a completely true statement." Clinton's statement that he did not have an affair with White House intern Lewinsky would later be revealed to be completely false. Additionally, President Clinton would go on to address the relationship with Lewinsky in a televised statement, admitting that his involvement with her was wrong. "...indeed, I did have a relationship with Ms. Lewinsky that was not appropriate. In fact, it was wrong." As 1998 came to an end, Clinton became the second president to be impeached. However, he was later acquitted by a Senate trial in February of 1999. Back on May 1, 2003, then-President George W. Bush arrived at the USS Abraham Lincoln to give a speech on the aircraft carrier beneath a large Mission Accomplished banner. The president said to the crowd, "...in the Battle of Iraq, the United States and our allies have prevailed." The crowd can be heard clapping and cheering in response to Bush's words. Many Democrats were let down by the seemingly warm reception that Bush received during the speech and feared that images from the event would be used for future Republican campaigning purposes. But, of course, those worries turned out to be pointless, as the image of Bush below the Mission Accomplished banner would instead become a reminder of the disfavored war that would continue for eight more years. Even President Bush later acknowledged the mishap during his final press conference, saying, "...clearly putting a mission accomplished on an aircraft carrier was a mistake. It sent the wrong message." On March 21, 2016, then-President Barack Obama visited Havana and met with Cuban President Raul Castro. The trip was considered extremely noteworthy, as the former American leader was the first sitting U.S. president to visit the island in 88 years. Still, despite the historical significance, President Obama's meeting with President Castro left plenty of people stunned for an entirely different reason, as there was a strange occurrence between the two leaders that looked more than a little odd. Referred to as an awkward handshake, the encounter showed the U.S. leader doing his best to avoid holding up his hand in solidarity with the Cuban president, leading Castro to grab onto Obama's wrist. While Twitter went wild commenting on the interaction, the White House had a reasonable explanation for President Obama's behavior. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest told reporters, "...I do think that President Castro had in mind a rather iconic photo with President Obama and his arms raised together." He added that President Obama likely thought that creating such an image could suggest false agreements between the pair. Still, Ernest stated that he didn't think Obama expected President Castro's actions, adding, "...I think the president did observe that for an 84-year-old, President Castro still has some pretty quick reflexes." In late May 2017, then-President Donald Trump visited Saudi Arabia during his first foreign trip as the U.S. leader. That Sunday, Trump attended the opening of the Global Center for Combating Extremist Ideology, along with Egypt's leader, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, and Saudi Arabia's King Salman. The three world leaders touched a glowing orb during the event, which unsurprisingly led to plenty of memes as people compared the trio to evil supervillains plotting a takeover. Additionally, in the aftermath of the strange event, Business Insider reported that a book about Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman alleged that American diplomats had enjoyed playing with the orb so much that it was gifted to the U.S. Embassy in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. However, supposedly as a result of the orb memes, the glowing sphere was put into storage out of fear that more photos of staffers touching the orb would get out and cause further embarrassment. On August 8, 1974, then-President Richard Nixon officially announced his resignation to the American people, becoming the first U.S. president to do so. "...I have never been a quitter." The nighttime address was a result of impeachment proceedings against Nixon, as well as his connection to the Watergate scandal. "...well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got." Reportedly, the public and the political backlash he was facing pushed President Nixon's decision to relinquish the presidency. The disgraced president stated, "...by taking this action, I hope that I will have hastened the start of the process of healing which is so desperately needed in America." 
The day after Nixon issued his goodbye speech, he and his family left the White House via helicopter, with the former commander-in-chief raising his arms up in a final farewell. The family then headed back to their home in San Clemente, California. Only minutes after his departure, then-Vice President Gerald R. Ford was sworn in and became the 38th President of the United States. After taking the oath, President Ford gave a televised national address, saying, "...my fellow Americans, our long national nightmare is over." Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.